So how's everybody doing? So we're up to something different today. We're doing uh, bench tops. Uh, and I'm using melamine or melamine, tomato, tomato, potato, potato, uh, for using for my molds for the tops. I have a standard size that I use. I make them 40 inches by 15 inches across and by two and three quarter inches deep overall depth is, is my standard for, for all of my bench tops. Uh, so you can see what I've done here is just made simple boxes. Uh, I countersink some holes in there and then I screw it. Uh, not a ton of screws. You want it easy to take apart when you're finished, but you want it to be tough enough because I don't put this on the vibrating table. I usually do it right on these tables and just lift the ends and bang them and you get a perfect cast at any time. No, no need to go through the fuss of taking it over there to the V table. So uh, you do want them to be able to hold up. So something I do too uh, is I like to put a molding inside of the bottom, which will be your top and it'll give a nice finish to your piece. So here's like a cove type and then here's a, a different type here and I'll show later what the end result will look like on your on your piece. So this one here I just finished siliconing all the edges and the bottom where it attaches to the, uh, the plate just so you don't have any seams where concrete you don't want concrete going out you don't want it in the edges you don't want it in the corners so I silicone them up so I just finished that one I've got these two to go. If your piece doesn't stay down, I just stick a clamp on it, like that one over there, and it'll hold well. And I'll just show you what I prefer. Just me, again, this is what I use. Doesn't matter the name brand or whatever, but what I'm looking for is that. The 30 minute water ready. For some reason, my countertop buddy and I have found that the other silicone actually retards a little bit of the the curing process and does sort of open up the pores on the the finished product and it leaves an sort of an undesirable look in our opinion okay in our opinion but we found with that 30 minute set doesn't matter if it's clear or brown or black or whatever for whatever reason whatever's in that 30 minute set stuff it doesn't do the same. It gives you a nice, good release. Uh, you don't have any marks. You don't have any retarding of the, the cure process, and it turns out really good. So the brand brand name doesn't matter. It could be anything, Joe Blow Silicone, uh, as long as it's 100% silicone, and it's the 30-minute cure. That what I've found, what works really good, and doesn't leave any blemishes on your finished piece. So, uh, okay, so this is just one little part here, and we'll move on with the the process and take it from there. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna uh, cock up this one here. I always assume people have done it before, but I'm just gonna show you folks that maybe have never done it. So it's with the caulking I was talking about, the silicone, 100%, 30 minute cure. Uh, I prefer a dripless gun. That means you don't have the little break on the, the bottom here. I like it that you don't have to fuss with it. So I'm just gonna show you what I'm gonna do. Just a thin bead. Come up through the corner. Through the other corner. Gonna run the top of the seam. And I just have a wet cloth. Some people like to use like a popsicle stick. I don't because it usually it leaves kind of a ridge line. So I just wet my fingers, wet a finger, and get in there and just pull it. Come up through the corner. Come up through the other corner. That 
that's it. Done. And you just make sure you don't have any big lumps or bumps. Looks really clean. That's good. So then you go around, finish off your four sides, and you're ready to go. Moving on to the next step of our uh, bench tops here. So the melamine boxes are done, the molding is in, and they've all been caulked. And so now what I'm just going to do is you can see there they are there. And I'm just cutting some rebar now as part of the reinforcement for the bottoms. So I'll just show you quick how to do that if you've never done it before or how I do it anyway. So just to remember, we always talk on the form that uh, safety first is really important. Okay, uh, so wear some safety glass. I'm going to be using an angle grinder here with a steel cutoff blade. So safety goggles on, uh, gloves. I had an incident a year ago where I didn't protect my hearing very well and I had some issues for about a half a year. So please wear these when you're around some noisy stuff. Just protect yourself. And so here we go. that's it that's how fast that goes it's pretty quick so in about 10 minutes or five minutes you could have all the steel cut for your project there uh, just thing I was going to mention the boxes are 40 inches so I'm cutting uh, the rebar at about 37 inches to go inside the box you don't have to be too tight from end to end uh, and next I'll be cutting some scrim to go on the top and that'll be the next little section okay now we're ready to cut some of our AR scrim I've already cut a couple pieces I keep mine on this roll. I've got a couple rolls up here, up to the ceiling. Uh, they're 36 inches wide, three foot wide, so which works out perfect because my uh, boxes are 40 inches. So I just have to measure up 13 inches. The box is 15, so I'll leave a little an inch clearance on either side. So I've already pre. I just nip a little side there to know where I'm 13 inches, and take my utility shears, and away we go. The scrim is readily available in Canada and the States. Uh, the easiest, I think, is if you can go Buddy Rhodes in Canada and in the States. He carries it on his website, and there's Canadian distributors for Buddy Rhodes products too. But there's other places. Sculpture Supply Canada is another one, and I'm sure in the States you can find lots of... Trinic carries it as well too. So there it is. So now we'll head back over to our boxes again. Okay, so we've cut our scrim for the three boxes. So here it is. It's gonna lay on the top. Remember I had said before, the very last thing that's gonna go into your boxes, because this is the bottom, the top is the bottom, is the rebar and the scrim, okay? Uh, that's where you wanna increase your tensile strength. It's because it's gonna do this, right? If somebody's sitting on it, so you want the support in the bottom, not up on the top, right? So it's got to be on the bottom. So that's the last thing to go in. So just so everybody knows, this is AR scrim. This is what the stuff looks like. It's 3 8 square of woven, woven fiberglass. Uh, the AR refers to alkaline resistant, so it won't break down in your concrete. So I just, this is straight off the Buddy Roads. So I, I don't get paid by Buddy Rhodes. I don't recommend it over anybody else's scrim. To me, scrim is scrim, right? So it just says alkali resistant glass scrim. AR glass scrim is an oriented fiber fabric. Scrims are particularly used in conjunction with fiber reinforced mixes. That's the fibers that you add to your mix to provide additional tensile strength in locations that will experience point specific strain. When they are placed in the tensile regions of the product, they can significantly increase the flexural strength of the composite. So that's the flexural strength that you're trying to reinforce, right? Uh, it's 3 8 webbing. Uh, I think they come in rolls 15 feet, 30 feet, 100 feet, 200 feet, and they're 36 inches wide. So I think I get 100 feet or so at a, at a shot on a roll. So I'm just gonna show you one other option. The, this is used a lot too by like countertop guys when they do their countertops that's the last thing you know they're going really thin right this is the last thing they're doing your architect, architectural concrete when they do these half inch uh, sheets like size of drywall 
to go up to this is the scrim is really important to them to go into it so here's just one more say you can't get any rebar you can't find any rebar where you are if you can get your hands on this this is called ladder reinforcement some people call it curbing reinforcement the way it's called why well, it's called ladder because it has these little rungs uh, this is a smaller version there is a wider one that you can get as well too they come in big I think like 14 foot lengths you can cut them up into pieces and make yourself a frame like this it's just held together see if you can see that with little zip straps little tiny zip straps in the corners to hold it together and what it would do is if you didn't have the scrim or say you didn't even have the rebar sorry then you could it's the same thing it would fit in here uh, again it's countertop guys use this a lot too this goes right into the back side of their their product and then the scrim would go actually over top of that steel okay that's the last thing they would put in but it's just another option for you like to lay this cage in i'm not going to lay it in but it's just another option that you can use i have used it before if i've run out of rebar um, the idea with increasing that flexural strength right somebody somebody could break your bench if they really wanted to i mean they'd have to really work at it but the problem is it's going to break but it's not going to come apart and that's what the rebar and uh, the cages or the scrim is going to do it it could snap but it's not going to fall apart and people aren't going to fall and get hurt so that's what you're trying to avoid but it does increase that strength by a lot right so it's like i said somebody really have to work on it hard to break it so anyway so we'll move on to the next step which is uh prepping some leaves in the bottom of our trays here and uh pouring some concrete okay folks now we're ready to do a little leaf action. I went out to the greenhouse and grabbed a couple elephant ear leaves. They're approximately the same size to each other, give or take a half inch. I mean, you can only work with what you got, right? Um, they're not always gonna be exactly the same size, but as long as it's not too noticeable, like the size difference on this. For this first one, I'm gonna do just simple, a couple elephant ears in the bottom. And as we go along, I'll do a couple more projects with a little more complicated stuff with the leaves or like a collage sort of an effect. So uh, what you want to do first, a couple things. Make sure any excess water is off of your leaf. So uh, it doesn't matter if it's an elephant ear or whatever leaf you're using, front and back side, you're going to want to make sure because your concrete's going on the back sides. And if you have big drops of water on here, when you put your concrete on top, that's going to leave a little bit of a void and you're going to get what's called sand tracking where your, your uh, finish won't be quite as nice because there'll be some bigger open pores and you'll be able to see sand uh, inside. So just make sure it's dry. And on the, the top side, of course, you're gonna be putting some silicone. So make sure it's dry too, because you want the silicone to, to stick. So I'm just gonna do this one leaf and then we'll move on to pouring. I, I won't show the whole doing both leaves. So all I'm doing with this leaf is just nipping off that center spine on an angle. Can you see that? And I've already pre-done the other one as well. You can see it's already in the, the box there. So now I'm just going to uh, lay this one in to approximately where I want it. So it's about halfway and centered about the same as the other leaf, which it is. So now so on the top side, make sure you don't hit the back side. This is some of that 30 minute silicone I was telling you about. So now you're just going to um, go around the leaf, just around the edge. And I'll just do one quickly here as fast as I can. Not to bore everybody watching me do this. I won't do the other leaf on camera. Get up on the tip. Try not to go too close to the edge. You don't want it squirting out. Doesn't have to be a thick bead. It's just a little film of it, a couple little depths in the middle. So now you're gonna take that leaf. And you're just gonna center it in there, lay it in like so. Now you're just gonna press it out to the edges.
There we go. So now you can see what I've done. I've just set it down, pressing down the edges, getting it to hold down. Don't worry about it rising a little bit in the middle there. Um, I'll show you how we're going to deal with that when we come time for the concrete, okay? So I'm just going to do the other one on my own, and uh, we'll continue in a minute. Lucky enough, I have a cement mixer. Not all of you are going to have that, or you're not going to want to run out and rent one just for doing something, if it's an at-home project. Um, lots of different ways you can mix your concrete. I use my own mix, but you can feel free to buy like the pre-mix at any home hardware, Lowe's, you name it, where they have it, Home Depot. Um, and use the pre-mix, you know, the, just the add water kind. That's the easiest. You can mix it in a wheelbarrow. You can put it in a five gallon bucket uh, and just attach one of these guys. Another mixing device onto a drill, a corded drill is best. Mix your concrete up. Uh, there's nothing wrong with using the pre-mix. It's just, this is what I use for my statuary. And I'm fortunate to have it, but there's lots of easier ways for you folks to do it. Okay. Okay, here we are. Here's the mixer. Here's the mix. So I'm just going to explain something. This is about this is about what you want for your mix to look like. Okay, like it still holds its form like that. That's that's about just about right. You want for the mix that you do, especially if you're using like a premix. I'm just going to tell you in my uh, mix, I use something called a super plasticizer. It's a water reducer. So when you see me pouring, it's going to be a very loose, way looser than this, okay? But you can't do that without a super plasticizer or you're going to have way too much water in your mix, okay? Uh, it just allows for easier, it's more pourability. It's what I use for my statuary net. So don't get confused. So this is about what you want. If you're mixing in a wheelbarrow or a bucket or if you have a mixer, you want it about this consistency there, okay? And, but when you see me, it's going to be a lot looser because I'm just going to add some super plasticizer right now. Okay, gang. So there we go. You can see the mix. This is the plasticizer. It's not a liquid. It's a dry powder. But you can see how runny my mix is already. I'm going to get it a little bit uh, runnier. Add a little bit more. But if you don't have a plasticizer, don't and you're just adding water, don't have it this loose because that's way too much water in your mix. Way too much, okay? So in the video, just do as I showed you to that, that sort of drier stage, okay? Okay, so now that's ready for me to pour. Okay, so here we are. And we're ready to start. I'm just gonna show you what I like to do. I want to put your concrete in the middle of a leaf and with a trowel or a small trowel I want you to work it out towards the edge of the leaf and you're pinning it down I know you've got silicone on it but it helps you try not to get too much concrete underneath the leaf you're gonna get some and that's okay but you don't want a whole lot um, I have done some on purpose, let it flow underneath and you chisel it out. It is kind of a cool effect, but it's also a lot of work. I mean a lot of work. So you can see what I'm doing here. Just pushing it out to the sides, to the edges. Here we go on the other half. Again, just working out to the edges, pinning it down. Because all the leaves have little ridges, and you just want to kind of force them down a bit before you put the rest of the concrete in. With melamine, you don't need any release on it. You don't need to spray it with anything. You could even use just a little bit of Pam or something on it, but it's not necessary. It'll all come off really nice. So, I'm just going to move the camera. This side over here. Because like I said, I could use my vibrating cable, but most of you don't, well, 99% of you don't have one. 
So this is, I've set it up just so you could do this at home. So you can see I've just thrown on some two by fours or two by sixes or whatever you have to get it up off of the ground, right? So now you can start adding the rest of your concrete in. So what you can do is you come down to one end back again. Basically what a vibrating table is doing. Same thing. I almost ran out of room on my camera. I had to stop for a second. Okay, now I can go around with a rubber mallet. enough to have this. This is just an old-fashioned massager. Some people use just a, like an electric sander with no sandpaper in it. Just to give the edges a little vibration. Now we're going to add our reinforcements now. You're just going to lay them on the top. So the trick is now once you've got this in here, you don't want to bang it and pick it up and bang it anymore because you just want this to settle in. You don't want it, if you pick this up and start shaking again, it's going to sink right to the top of the piece and you don't want that. Or it can shift around and come out through the sides. So you're just going to settle it on in. bit more on top. <clears throat> so the bigger trowel. Okay, now I'm going to bring it right to the very top. Now you're going to 
call do what's called screeding. Any kind of a straight edge, it could be steel, uh, as long as it's a nice straight piece of wood, you're gonna bring it to one end, and you're just gonna jiggle it back and forth. It's gonna find the high and the low spots. Tells me I need a little bit more. You want it to be nice and flush. side that's all right so now is when you're gonna add your scrim okay so it's all flush and level so now you're just gonna grab your piece of scrim you're gonna lay that right on top you can just go with your hands real gentle like and you're just gonna slowly settle it in just rubbing it back and forth and you can also use your trowel. As you can see, it's starting to settle in. I'll pick up the camera in a second and show you. And there you go. You can just see it through the top of the concrete, a thin layer there, but it's all in. The reinforcement's in, the rebar is in, it's ready to go. In about 15 minutes or so, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how to use this. Okay, here we go. It's about uh, 20 minutes later since I poured this. You can see there's no water build up on the top. If your mix was too loose, like it was the consistency that I put it in and you didn't have a plasticizer, you'd see a, a big layer of water on the top. You want to get that off. You want to take some paper towel or something, keep laying it across, get that water off the top. You don't want that water settling in on there. <clears throat> so this is just something that I do. You don't have to do it and I'll tell you why I do it is with, with the bottom edge here, it's going to be like a 90 degree sharp angle. And that's gonna be the thing that breaks uh, when you take it out of the mold or when someone's moving it, it's gonna snap a chunk off the side, off, off of the corner, but it's also gonna run into the side. So what I do, this is what they use on sidewalks. You can see the, the shape, the little lip on there, uh, where they put the little cracks in the sidewalk, the expansion joints, um, and roundings over on sidewalks. You'll see in a second what it does. So what I do is I just come down with that lip edge. I just go along the edge, hold it up a bit. Can you see what that's done there? So what that's doing is giving me a rounded over edge. <clears throat> I just spray a little bit of water on the towel, just a bit.
just have a little bit to uh, clean up on the corner. Or your trowel doesn't come in all the way. I'm just going to push that down a little bit. You probably can't see me. Here I am. I'm over here. There we go. I'm just over in this corner here. It's just where you're you're crossing the, the two pieces. So all I'm doing is just tidying that up a little bit. Keeping that round over. So what that does now, now you've got a rounded edge that's going to be on the bottom of your bench. And that won't catch on things and snap and break off and leave an ugly looking edge. So that's just me. You don't have to do it. If you don't feel like doing it, don't do it. Um, like I always say, I'm just a guy. I'm just showing you what I do. You can either use it or do what you like with it. But uh, that's about it. We'll see what happens when we turn this out tomorrow.